Good morning, all. Today's class will be on occlusion and occlusional therapies. As you all know, the role of occlusion uh, in uh, many disciplines of medicine, in prosthodontics, it is very important and it is an inevitable topic because if you want to deliver an FPD or if you go for a full mouth rehabilitation, the role of uh, occlusion is inevitable. And in orthodontics, say for example, the final stage of orthodontic treatment requires, you know, uh, the stable occlusion. In orthogonic surgery, it is having about in conservative dentistry. But what is the role of occlusion in periodontics? So that is the precise area what we are going to discuss today. Ever since uh, one researcher in periodontics, Harold and his colleague Nunn, has published an article in 2001 stating the role of occlusion in the disease progression. The researchers has gained momentum in this direction and a lot of research has been published ever since 2001. And many studies say and uh, uh, overlies the importance of occlusion on periodontal disease progression. So before moving to that, I would like to put forth a few questions before you. Does the occlusion influences the periodontal disease progression? Does the trauma from occlusion uh, accentuates the periodontal bone loss? Does a bruxer is having an influence on a periodontium? Or uh, ultimately all these uh, problems may lead to temporomandibular disorders. So does a, a role, uh, there is a role of occlusion in uh, uh, temporomandibular disorders. So this is few question I would like to put forth and uh, planning to address in this uh, uh, introductory lecture as well as the forthcoming classes uh, regarding the occlusion. So we will move on to uh, the topic proper. Well, before moving into the topic, let me explain few terminologies regarding occlusion. What is an occlusion? The term occlusion derived from medical literature. As you all know, the blood clot within the lumen, it gets occluded and the, the area which is applied the, by this artery may be devoid of blood. So from that terminology, the word occlusion came. But what does uh, the dental occlusion mean? So when uh, your upper and lower jaw meet, eat, uh, I mean closes, the teeth meet each other. So when the uh, teeth meet each other, it joins together and the meeting point is called occlusion. That is a simple understanding regarding occlusion. And before moving into the topic, I would like to explain uh, the basic anatomy of uh, TMJ also. So this will be uh, detailedly described, described uh, when I take the PowerPoint presentation class for you. So before moving to the topic, uh, the PPT, you should have a basic understanding regarding the, uh, the anatomy of TMJ. Well, now let me explain how TMJ works. The occlusion can be well understood and studied only as a component of a stomatognathic system. So it functions as a single unit. You should understand how the TMJ work, how the muscles of mastication work, what are the blood supply, I mean nerve supply of this, and uh, how the, uh, 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 the anatomy of uh, TMJ, then moving into the uh, centric relation and centric occlusion, the terminologies like this. So I would, like, I would like to explain how the TMJ works. I would like to morphologically explain like this. Can you able to see my hand? Now, imagine this is glenoid fossa. Here, the, your contile will snugly fit inside the glenoid fossa. And there is a clearance between these two teeth, uh, two hands. And there is a disc called, uh, uh, the articular disc is interposed between two, these two hands. And let us see how the uh, opening of the TMJ works. Initial 30 degree of your mouth opening, the uh, TM, the condyle rotate inside the glenoid fossa. And after the 13 degree, it's uh, further if you open the mouth, it slides 
in the anterior slope of the articular eminence. This is how the, um, the uh, movement of the condylar head inside the glenoid fossa when you open the mouth. Well, coming to the occlusal aspect of intraorally, let us uh, see. Uh, I would like to explain two important curves. Rather than giving definitions of this cave, I'll morphologically explain what is a raw, how does this cave runs and uh, what is the role of this curve uh, in the occlusion. So can I able to see a model here? Here, from the canine tooth, if you run a uh, run an imaginary lines touching all the buccal roots of the um, lower teeth and extrapolate that curve into an uh, condylar region uh, runs through the mid, mid of the condylar region so this uh, this circle will comes to a diameter of 4 inches so this curve is called the curve of spleen imagine a situation where you have a deep uh, deep bite where you have a maximum overbite cases this cave will be accentuated and uh, this curve the the distal uh, the mesial aspect of this curve will curve up and here this will curve uh, the steep curve will be there in the condylar region so this is one aspect of uh, this curve is called curve of spleen speed now let us see what curve of monson is the lower both the lower teeth are inclined little can you able to see this lower teeth are inclined lingually like this both the tooth are inclined like this so when you uh, runs a, a when a, when you mark a, a imaginary line starting from the buccal aspect goes to the lingual cusp and goes and comes to the lingual cusp of the other side then comes to the buccal it forms a uniform uh, you know u-shaped uh, imaginary line that imaginary line is called curve of Monson. Okay, now let us see what uh, centric relation is. Centric relation is an important terminology uh, when you learn about occlusion. Let us, uh, let us not uh, go behind the definition. Let us understand what is centric relation is. It is the position of maxilla with respect to the mandible. And uh, imagine this is a glenoid fossa and you have a condyle here centric relation position is the when your condylar head is in the maximum superior and uh, posterior aspect of the glenoid fossa so in this relation uh, you have a disc also interposed between the disc will be in the topmost or the anterior slope of the uh, guidance the uh, the articular eminence so this position of uh, the uh, maxilla in relation to mandible uh, yeah, in the hinge position is called centric relation. Now let us see what maximum intercuspation position is. So maximum intercuspation position is nothing but the teeth will uh, interdigate and uh, fully form like this. See if the tooth will perfectly align and uh, it overlaps each other. So this position is called maximum intercuspation position. So in man, maximum intercuspation position, it can be in a centric occlusion or in, in it may be in some other position. The reference point is only pertaining to the teeth. There will be a perfect interdigitation between the teeth. So this position is called maximum intercuspation position. Well, having said uh, regarding various um, positions of mandible, now let us see what three terminologies like uh, lateral protrusive and mediotrusive movement and protrusive movements. Now in Keransa, it is well explained uh, in definition, but uh, let us have a morphological look. How does it function? So this is, imagine this is a upper teeth and it is getting occluded like this. Now what is uh, lateral protrusive movement? The movement of mandible towards the lateral aspect. This is called a lateral trussive movement. And what is medial trussive movement? Movement of the mandible towards the midline, that is towards the medial side, it is called medial trussive movement. Then what is protrusive movement? The movement of uh, mandible anteriorly towards, uh, the, uh, towards the front, it is called um, protrusive movement. Now, two other terminologies in occlusion is working side and balancing side. What is working side? 
the working side is imagine you try clenching your teeth and uh, try to move your uh, mandible or right side of the mandible towards the right so this is called working side you are munching on your right side and the other other part is not other part of the man left side of the mandible is not touching each other so that is called working side and the other side is balancing side or you can put like this the side which is moving away from the midline is working side the side which is coming towards the midline is called balancing side this is balancing side and the right side is the working side now one more important concept regarding occlusion is which is the first tooth which in which comes in contact in the arc of closure of mandible so that is having an important so you must have heard that uh, different types of occlusion canine guided occlusion is there anterior guided occlusion is there and group function occlusion is there let us see what uh, a canine guided occlusion is there now imagine you have a uh, teeth and your mandible is coming and contacting one particular tooth that is a canine first and it glides into maximum intercuspation position this is called a canine guided occlusion so eventually this canine will protect other posterior teeth from contacting each other and having interferences so canine in canine guided occlusion the canine will contact first and eventually as the mandible closes it slides and it will reach a maximum intercuspation position so that is called a canine guided occlusion and if all the anterior teeth are coming in contact simultaneously it is called anterior guidance occlusion and if a group of teeth in the posterior teeth a posterior part comes in contact and it is leading into the maximum intercuspation position it is called a group function occlusion well now i would like to explain one more important concept in occlusion that is disclusion what is disclusion uh, we can say that this occlusion like this is the tooth in occlusion and uh, if you try to open up the mandible or uh, if you try to protrude your mandible your posterior teeth will disocclude so the time taken for disocclusion is also very important Uh, in the latest gadgets like t scan we the uh, the disclusion time will be correctly noted and uh, depending upon the disclusion time taken it is less than a second but uh, the micro second of disclusion time variation is important in case of temporomandibular disorder so this is this uh, disclusion well now we have discussed regarding various uh, terminologies and certain concepts of occlusion we have discussed uh, right from the uh, the basic anatomy of tmj the normal curves in the occlusion important curves like uh, curve of p and curve of manson now we have discussed regarding uh, the position of max mandible and maxilla like centric relation centric occlusion and uh, maximum intercuspation position the movements of mandible like uh, protrusive movement lateral protrusive movement and the medial protrusive movement uh, then uh, during the working uh, of uh, dynamic motion of uh, mandible we have discussed regarding uh, working side and uh, uh, non working side which is balancing side now with this understanding regarding the basics we all we will move on to the next uh, lecture series uh, we have uh, also discussed regarding disclusion which is having a due importance in uh, uh, in uh, you know treating temporomandibular disorders so with this uh, idea in mind uh, we will move on to the next lecture series and uh, we will have a better understanding regarding how the affected periodontium uh, is treated in case of occlusal disharmony and let us see few appliances uh, to treat this occlusal disharmony and uh, with a brief uh, Uh, idea regarding uh, occlusal equilibration so uh, see you all for the next lecture uh, the coming uh, up lecture will be uh, uh, will be there after few days so meet you all there till then goodbye